the first move is pulling back like this, it will just pull the dumbbells off the ground and then you can just slowly push up with your quads and your butt. Hey guys, Mark McKillar with Live Anabolic and today I'm going to show y'all how to do deadlifts with dumbbells. Use the proper form so you don't hurt your back and get the absolute most out of it. But first, I'm also going to show you how I like to stretch and warm up before I do something like deadlifts. Alright guys, deadlifts are a fantastic exercise because it is a calm pound movement all right now that means we're using lots of different muscle groups multiple joints are all activated at the same time and as you've probably seen me talk about in other videos on this channel doing compound exercises is fantastic for boosting your body's natural production of testosterone and guys your legs are half of the muscle mass in your body so when we do compound movements with our legs we're getting like a twofer all right we're getting tons of muscles involved and they're the biggest muscles and it's compound all that combined really does help with our testosterone levels so you know you can do compound movements with your upper body which is great for your t-levels but you're not engaging as much muscle mass and hence you're not going to get as much out of it as when you do a compound movement with your lower body so guys before i get into the exercise itself and give you kind of a few pointers on how to do it and how to avoid getting injured the first thing I'm gonna do is stretch now guys deadlifts activate a lot of different muscles okay primarily they get your hamstrings your ass your glutes all right to a lesser extent they get your quads and your lower back gets really involved with this exercise and of course all your core okay so because you're having to contract your core during the movement so there's a whole lot of things going on here so I need to stretch out okay especially my back and my hips because this movement requires us to really be flexible and to be able to hinge at our hips a lot so this is how I like to do it guys this is just real straightforward everybody can kind of modify this okay according to you know your own personal <laughs> needs some guys got real stiff backs, some guys got bad knees, ankles, it doesn't matter. So I start off like this and I get on my toes and I push myself back and I stay on my toes, all right? So what I'm doing right now, all right, even though you can't necessarily see it, I can sure feel it, I'm stretching my calves. Now I'm feeling it down low, okay? Down the lower half of my calf muscle, down towards my Achilles tendon, okay? Now I'm also stretching my quads and my lower back to a, to a certain degree here. So I just hold this for about 15 seconds or so. Then I get out of my knees and I point my toes flat like this and I sit back down on my heels, okay? Now I'm, I'm stretching my ankles, okay? And I'm stretching my quads even more and this is what I really like to do. You, you guys are gonna love this on your back, okay? So I'm gonna just put my head down now and I'm gonna pull my arms forward with my fingers. Oh, and so what I can feel right now is a great stretch in my lower back and also in my lats, just below my shoulders, okay? And then what I'd like to do is I can rock from side to side just a little bit, so I'm pushing to the right and I'm really feeling the stretch here and then I'll push to the other side and keep my head hands out in front of me and I can really feel the stretch on this side of my lower back all right Ugh. and you only need to hold that for about 15 to 20 seconds okay kind of getting things loosened up a little bit now the other thing I like to do for my hip joints okay because we are going to be using our hips a lot and I lay down and I'm going to push my knee away from my head okay and you're gonna be feeling it stretch in here okay your hip flexors you're gonna feel them stretch and you can do this you know once again I like to count to 15 or 20 typically all right and I'm cutting it a little short here so you guys <laughs> don't get bored watching me stretch but so I'm now I'm pushing my left knee forward and I can really feel it all right 
And now, this is this feels great too, guys. Cross my foot over my leg, and I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna pull my knee down towards the floor while I'm trying to keep my right shoulder on the ground. Oh, this feels so good. And I mean, you're feeling a huge stretch all through your glutes here, guys. So just kind of hold that for about 15 to 20 seconds. Come back, do it on the other side, foot over. Gosh, this feels so good. Hips, and then finally guys, this is a real easy fun stretch here. Get into this position, okay? Foot up against your thigh here. And I'm just gonna pull my chest down to my knee, okay? And just, oh, just let your body weight your, your shoulders, your torso, stretch you out. And you're gonna feel this in your groin and then also back here on the side of your glutes, okay? So we're just trying to loosen up our hip joints. It's, it's the biggest, strongest joint in our body. So it can take a lot of weight. And it's also the second most flexible joint. Your, your shoulder is the most flexible joint. But your hips have got a ton of mobility. And guys, even if you're not doing deadlifts, if you're just trying to loosen things up in the morning, all right, these are some great stretches. Everybody should be able to do them, even if you can't do them as deep as I go. You can get at least part of the way and then build your way up over a period of weeks and months. You'll be way, way more flexible. So with that done, let's get up. And I'm gonna start talking about Doing deadlifts, now, you see a lot of guys at the gym doing deadlifts with, with barbells, and that's a great way to do it. But when, the, when you're using a barbell, just because of the physics, the bar has to be in front of you. It can't go through the middle of your thigh, okay? So anytime the bar is in front of you, it's the weight's pulling you forward, okay? And if you're not careful, it can get you out of position and it can put a lot of stress on your lower back. The nice thing about dumbbells, there's no bar. So when I grab these things, I can put the dumbbells right at the side of my legs, not slightly in front of my legs. And hence, when I go to pick them up, the weight is more centered on my body and not quite so far out in front of me. And it didn't put as much weight on your lower back. So guys, this is a deal. You don't need a real wide stance, guys. I would say actually just about shoulder width, maybe even slightly narrower than shoulder width. And I like to put the dumbbells right at the side of my feet here, okay? Now, the first move when you're doing a deadlift or squat for that matter is you stick your ass out. All right, so you hinge at the hip. So I'm not even thinking about my knees bending right now. I'm not thinking about bending over with my back. I'm just looking forward and I'm just sticking my butt out. Almost like there was a car door, an open car door that I'm trying to shut, okay, with my butt. So boom, and you can look forward and slightly down, okay. And you start to squat down until you can get your hands on these dumbbells. Now, this is a great starting position here, guys, okay? So I'm looking forward, I'm trying to keep my back relatively straight. Now, you won't be able to feel if your back is straight. It'd be wonderful if you had a mirror off to the side, okay, where you could check your form, but most people aren't gonna be able to do that. So if you feel like you're arching your back this way, you're really not arching it, it's really straight, okay? So stick your butt out, feel like your back is arched, go down, look forward, okay? And then the first move is you can feel like if you're rocking back, pulling back like this, it will just pull the dumbbells off the ground and then you can just slowly push up with your quads and your butt, okay? And then the movement back down, the first bit starts with butt out, Looking forward, ass down, butt out, look forward, back up. And what I like to do is just pick a spot on the wall, okay? About three or four feet off the ground. 
and I can just stare at it and that helps keep my balance when I'm going up and down. And another misconception I see people do wrong, and I remember learning this when I was young, doing squats. Everybody said, look up, look up, because that'll keep your back straight. All right, and everybody's doing this. Same thing with deadlifts. Oh, try to look up, try to look up. Well, guess what? 20 years ago, I was doing that with barbell squats. I was looking up, looking up, and I ended up <laughs> rupturing a disc in my neck. So you want to keep your spine neutral or straight, but you also want to keep your neck neutral or straight. So if you're looking up like this, your neck is not in a neutral position. So that's why I pick, I look forward and I don't, and I don't look at eye level, I look down slightly, okay? Because when you hinge at the hips, your chest and your upper back tilt forward slightly, which means your head's got to tilt slightly forward unless you want to bend your neck and look up, okay? And I wouldn't recommend looking down right in front of you, okay? But if you want to pick a spot on the ground, 10, 12 feet out in front of you, or on the wall a couple feet up, you know, that's a great way to keep your back straight and your neck in a straight or neutral position. Okay, so guys, the reason I took so long to go through the form for this particular movement is because if you do it wrong, okay, you can mess up your back. But it's really not that scary of an exercise, guys. The people who tend to hurt their backs are people who tend to go to the gym and load up a barbell with a lot of weight. And because the bar is out in front of you, they tend to bend over like this and they end up rounding their back and because if they're, they're at the gym and there's other people watching them, they tend to put more weight on there than they should because they're ego lifting. They want to impress other people with how much weight they can deadlift. So they put too much weight on and they bend over like this instead of getting their ass down, okay? And that's what can cause problems with your lower back. But we're, first of all, we're not doing a barbell. We're doing dumbbells, which are on the side which keeps the weight back slightly versus a barbell that would be in front of our thighs, okay? And then secondly, we're not ego lifting. We're not lifting too much weight. Uh, matter of fact, most of you guys, my weights go up to 50 pounds, okay? So 50, and I only have 30 right now, just for demonstration purposes, but 50 pounds for me would actually be really light, okay? I can deadlift way, way more than 50 pound dumbbells, but you guys can make it feel heavier by just using really good form and going slow, okay, throughout the full range of the mo motion. Uh, so slow down and slow back up increases that time under tension, which of course tricks your body, okay, and makes it feel so much heavier, all right? Your, your muscles will get fatigued even though you're using a relatively light weight. And of course, that's, that's the goal because that is what triggers signals that go to our brain that says, uh-oh, these muscles are getting stressed out. I need to ramp up production of testosterone, all right? So we can use that testosterone to repair all those damaged muscle fibers over the next couple of days. All right, so guys, I'm sure you've heard the saying, friends don't let friends skip leg day, all right? Well, that's what this is all about. Everybody likes to work their upper body muscles, okay? but your legs are really important. And when I see guys, you know, by the pool or the lake or whatever, walking around in short pants out in golf, it doesn't matter, with these little skinny bird legs, it just looks weird, okay? And then another thing, guys, this is where your power comes from, okay? Your lower body is where all your athletic ability starts, okay? And it doesn't matter what you're doing, even golf, Okay, your power comes from your lower body, okay, not your upper body. And so I don't care whether you're throwing a punch, all right, or tennis, almost every sport, okay, everything starts from the ground up. And if you don't have a good, strong foundation, big legs, you're not gonna be nearly as effective in whatever you're doing. It doesn't even have to be a sport. It could just be mowing the lawn, okay? It could be lifting heavy stuff to put in your car or your pickup truck. It all starts down here, guys. All right, so this is just a single exercise that you guys can work into 
whatever workout program you're doing, okay? But I always talk about doing consistency is what's really important. Just hitting it hard for a few weeks at a time ain't gonna hack it, all right? So I really urge you guys to at least check out my workout program that I designed specifically for you guys, for guys my age, all right? It's called Fit After 50. It's a three-phase, three-month program. Each phase is significantly different from the previous phase. And I mean, there are just dozens and dozens and dozens of different exercises. And it really keeps it interesting and unique and fun, which in turn means you're gonna stick with it and see great results. Um, another thing, if you're trying to do these kind of exercises, you know, specifically to lose body fat, the Fit After 50 program is a fantastic way to go, but you might ought to consider experimenting with some supplements. See what works best for you. We got something called Anabolic Shred that is a really cool fat loss supplement. At least give it a try. You don't have to buy 20 bottles of it, okay? But, you know, buy a bottle, see how it works, take notes, okay? And, and track your weight. And it's, it's a great way to try to basically supercharge, turbocharge your fat loss along with your exercise program and of course, great nutrition. All right, guys, always remember, you gotta stick with it and never give up on yourself.